What's up guys, we're back and got a great show lined up for today. So the cold weather's moving in and it's about time that your boiler problems are gonna start showing up. And so before we get going, I want you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get all the latest content and updates from Power Mechanical. We're gonna be having some dates for steam school coming up. So go ahead and subscribe, that way you can stay in tune with when those are. So today we're looking at six of the most common boiler problems that we see in facilities and we're doing it right now. Number six, water treatment or lack thereof. So whether there's no water treatment or improper dosing and chemical types, this can be a uh, potential risk for your boiler. The water chemistry is often neglected in boiler rooms, leaving the boiler to fend for itself against the harmful deposits that makeup water can leave behind. Newsflash, it's not gonna happen. Water contains various minerals and oxygen content that when heated can cause foaming, scaling, and corrosion within the boiler. These chemicals are uh, prescribed specifically for the water conditions within the plant to help ward off these potential hazards. Prolonged neglect leads to even bigger problems. So this leads us to number five, improper blowdown procedures, or again, lack thereof. Oftentimes, whether from just not understanding the importance of blowdowns, incorrect uh, procedures, not wanting to waste energy, or just simply not doing them, the blowdown of a steam boiler is critical. These deposits that we speak of will cling to the boiler's metal surfaces and accumulate in the boiler's belly area. Uh, and performing these daily blowdowns are critical to ensure that the scale is being removed. Different boilers may require different blowdown rates based on the makeup water percentage and other operating conditions. Now, most facilities ensure that a blowdown is performed daily at a minimum whereas uh, usually they strive once per shift to conduct a blowdown. Now these incremental blowdowns obviously waste a bit of steam, yet the benefit of the blowdown far outweighs the minimal loss as compared to the potential risk associated with not performing a blowdown. So just remember with your blowdowns to perform blowdowns on the water column and ensure that you have your continuous or surface blow open as applicable and perform the bottom blowdown. The rule of thumb on order is fast first and slow second. We have another video with more details on blowing down the boiler, but this is just a good rule of thumb to use to remember the sequence that is often confused. Fast first, slow second. Number four, lack of maintenance. Guys, this seems to be a no-brainer, but some boilers never get the recommended preventative maintenance. And as the old saying goes, you plan your equipment's maintenance or it will plan it for itself. So refer to your operator's manual for specific maintenance intervals for each boiler. While a lot of boilers maintenance can be generalized, there are some models that may have very unique or specific requirements for their routine and regular maintenance. Partner with a local qualified boiler service provider to perform routine and planned maintenance and keep your boiler running in top condition throughout the year. As another old saying goes, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Be proactive with your boiler room maintenance and not reactive. Number three, lack of operator training. At the end of the day, knowing how always helps. Too often operators get put into positions to oversee boiler operations and perform required maintenance with little to no training or experience. Facilities will staff a position with an expectation that on the job training will occur when oftentimes there is no one else even working in with the operators. Now boilers are quite safe considering they are operated and maintained properly. And the best approach to ensure this is done is to have operators trained with qualified safety and operations training. Number two, soot and scale. So collectively, all these things we've been discussing leads us to right here. Soot and scale in any amount spell trouble for a boiler. A boiler that is not being blown down will see problems with scale. Increased scale equals overfiring and then leads to a whole host of other problems, not to mention the excess fuel consumption. And we were just talking about waste just a moment ago. So the little things done consistently add up to the big things that count. Blowing down the boiler daily, checking the stack temperature are two critical steps that will increase these systems running at their top performance. So soot and scale both serve as insulators. And when we consider the basic heat exchange principle, then the last thing our boilers need on either side of the heat transfer area is an insulator. We want maximum efficiency in the heat exchange and this means to ensure that we don't have scale or soot accumulation. And finally, number one, low water. If you didn't already know it, low water in a boiler room can become catastrophic fast. Again, lack of maintenance is usually what leads to low water situations in a boiler. 
Low water occurs when the water level inside the vessel falls below a specific area. Even a slight deviation of the water's level can cause the tubes to be blistered or ruptured. The boiler's furnace is generating incredibly high temperatures inside the fireside and the water serves to absorb that, this heat. Not having the metal surfaces protected by the water wall can ruin equipment and cause severe personnel and property damage. The gauge glass is your visual indicator of the boiler's water level. Learn to fix your eyes upon the gauge glass near every time you enter your mechanical rooms to ensure that you understand your boiler's water level conditions and how certain evolutions may cause it to fluctuate. The most common reason for a low water situation in a boiler is failure of the low water cutout. The low water cutout should be checked daily at a minimum to ensure that it's cutting out when it is supposed to. And some facilities even replace these components at set intervals regardless of their operating conditions. This device easily would rank as what most would consider the most important boiler room component. All right, guys, there you have it. I hope you liked this show. And if you did, be sure and hit that thumbs up button. Also, make sure and subscribe so you can stay in touch with us and get all the latest content and updates. Also want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. And other than that, we'll see you next week for another Steamworks. <laughs>